Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the MVVM pattern and react. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I am struggling with understanding how I should structure my react code. Do you have any tips that I can apply? I use MV MVVM, but do you have an, a better way of doing things? And the short answer is that MVC, my friend, well, that's at least what we old farts call it, but MVVM sounds a lot cooler. Let me explain. So the basics of MVVM, which is, it's like I had to read up on this because it was a term that was kind of foreign to me, because as I said, like usually the, the thing that we call this is MVC. It, MVVM stands for, if I remember correctly now, it is the view the contain the view controller, the view model, and then the view oh, and then the model. Yeah, basically that. So for me, who is just like a normal mortal and don't invent new things, that just sounds to me like MVC. It's just that you have a more you seem to have added another a few another layers. Usually you just cut out the whole like. Uh, I suppose that makes sense because in React land, in front end land, you might want to you want to express that you have a view component and you have a view model, and that's a different thing. So the extra M there or the extra view thing there that might actually make sense. I don't know, but the thing that I usually do when I structure my React code with me and my team is that we we and this is kind of the MVVM pattern is based on an a front and oriented perspective. And I think that that's a big mistake. Well, I wouldn't say a big mistake necessarily, but I think that that's only part of the equation. If you want to have a very easy time working with say React and actually be able to display data in, the, in a very easy and simple fashion, I highly encourage you to look at the MVC pattern and understand one fundamental thing about the MVC pattern because it starts at the server. A view, my friend, is not a HTML page necessarily. A view is not necessarily some visual thing. It might just be data. So the way that I usually, you should usually structure this, if you ask me, is that you have an internal model on the server. Now that internal model is your data store. It's the model that this is a model that you shouldn't actually necessarily send over the network. Sometimes it's a model that very easily fits over the network and you can just send it out. But this is the biggest mistake people do in front end, just in general. And that is that you don't create a view for your, for your model at all. Like what you do is that you take the raw data that you hold in your database and you just send it out into the cyberspace or to the client and then you put it on the client, the actual JavaScript code that is something that executes all the time to shape your data into the correct format. What ideally you should do is to do a very similar thing to the MVV pattern and that is on the server to create a view model. It's a model that takes in your raw model or the, the model that you have in your data stores and simply maps out the properties that you need on that route. So if a user goes to a certain route, you simply have a representation of what that model should look like. It can be a much simpler model. It might not include all the data that is in your database, but or it might and it might not even have the same type system. It just might be strings and numbers and stuff of this nature. And then you send that because then you have things in the exact shape. Now on the client side, you should have a similar, at least if you ask me, a similar mindset to how MVVM works, where when you take the network request, when that actually comes in, you're going to get some raw data. And that's just going to be a promise with some JSON. You don't really know necessarily what shape that's going to be in. You might use TypeScript and then you can try to model your data. After, like You can create a TypeScript, in, TypeScript interface or something like that for the incoming model. And then you take that model and then you use your front end code to do the same thing. It's, uh, it's, you can think of it as a, as a transformation or a mapping, let's call it, mapping is probably a better word, but the, basically the server has a raw model. We transform that into a view model that we're gonna send over the network. 
then that hits the, the, the client code. There, if you have the right model coming in, then you don't have to do anything with that, but you might also have to have your own model on the client side that maps the view model into the model that your React code is going to consume. And once you've done that, because that's what you should, like ideally when you're developing as a backend developer or a frontend developer, you should always try to ignore the other perspective. In other words, when you are a backend developer, you should always think about the perspective of the server. Okay, how can I create a model that sends the right data to to the client. I don't want to leak any data. I just want to send the exact thing right. And the same thing goes for input. I should always, always, always validate the input from the client because I can't trust the client. I don't know what the client's going to send me. It might be a hacker or something like that. The client side should think in a very similar fashion. It's just that we don't. Usually what people do is that they just take whatever the server is sending completely blindly and then they try to shape their code after what the data is represented, how the data is represented from the server. Instead, what I argue is that you look at it from the other perspective. Okay, you create all these visual components and then you make up a model you, that you need in order to represent this. So you create a React component, a view component that has some titles, some usernames and some to-do lists or items or strings or something like that. And then you shape your, you just create an interface that represents what data is needed for this view. Then you give that to your controller, you have a view component and then you have a controller component. And in the controller component, you do this network request. Now the network request is going to give you back some data. And now it is your job to as early as possible shape the incoming data into the model that your view is expecting. You're not just blindly taking that data and pushing it into your view and then trying to shape it into the right place inside of your view. That's not how you should think about it. You should, at the just after the network call comes back or the promise gets resolved, just map that over and put it into the shape that you need in order to keep your component as simple as possible. Because what you're going for is a very similar thing to the standard backend MVC pattern. You have a model that is coming, in this case, it's coming into the network. You have a controller, a controller that is, is responsible for injecting business logic and connecting a network request into something like that. And then you have a view, which in in standard MVC is, an, is just an, in, usually it's an HTML template. It doesn't have to be, as I said, but it could be. And then you, that temple, template, just the controller is responsible for mapping the data from the model into the template and then rendering that out and sending it to the client. In React, it's, you can think about React the exact same way. It's just that you take the network request, the controller maps the data into the shape that it should be, and then the view component is just a dumb component that just takes a bunch of strings and values. It doesn't have to have any business logic at all. You don't have to have a single word usually inside of a view component that states something like, this is the user's uh, user.name or price.amount or something like that. You simply pass in a bunch of strings that you will render out into the different slots that are in your template. You can just think of a view component as a pure template, just as in HTML. So what I want you to take away from this is that overall, I think that the MBM, MBVM pattern, like it's a, it's a good pattern. I just think that it's, it's only, it focuses too much on at least the examples that I saw were a little bit object oriented for my taste. Like they more because, I mean, it's not bad to write things in an object oriented fashion. It was just that the examples that I have looked at feels a little bit, you know, they have the standard problems where you could have solved, you don't have to create an entire class to represent a model. You can, when you're doing things on the client, you really only need a function that can resolve in that goes to the network and resolves into a model of some sort. But that's me being a little bit opinionated. Overall, it was, it's a very straightforward, it's a pretty straightforward pattern. But I think that you, you, by just looking at that, you're missing half the equation because the first, the one half of this is to understand how to shape your data what that's coming from the network into something that you need on the client and then keeping your view component very clean and reusable and the container containing all of the business logic that is going to be injected into the view. That's half of it. The other half is what is the server doing? Don't just blindly send data. Just think about the MVC pattern on the server as well. You have a model, a controller and a view of some sort. That view can be JSON, it can be a text file, it can be anything. And then you simply take the data that you're getting from your model and your controller on the server and shape it into the shape that is most suited for the view or the consumer. Don't just send the data, 
make sure that you're sending data that is exactly what's needed on the client. That usually helps quite a lot with keeping things clean and it avoids this issue that some people have where they just take any data, just the raw data that's coming from the server, and then they try to shape all of the view, their view components and do a bunch of transformations on the client when they could have done that work before we even left the network or we left the server. Have a great day.